Welcome to Marvel Vision, a podcast about Marvel, the MCU, and right now, a woo, werewolf by night. <laughs> oh, I'm oh Alex. My God. Was that a werewolf or the cookie crisp dog saying, kooky crisp? I'm Justin. I'm Pete. And spoilers here if you've never checked out Cookie Crisp or Werewolf by Night, which is currently on. Is there a connection? Maybe. We'll explore it over the course of this podcast. But this is a standalone Marvel Halloween spooky special. There are implications, of course, going forward on the horror side of the MCU. This is focusing on the character Jack Russell, a.k.a. Werewolf by Night, first invented created in 1972 invented by invented. thomas edison he invented the light bulb and werewolf by night no man uh well nikola i was gonna say nikola tesla invented it but nikola tesla came up with vampire by day i believe is what he that's did. right oh, and that right. was you know obviously it's turned all into the twilight series yeah. <laughs> exactly marvel spotlight number two in february 1972 uh created by roy thomas and gene thomas and jerry conway and mike plug um, and there's been a bunch of different iterations, but basically what you need to know was this was a way of Marvel bringing horror back to comic books after, I believe, it had been banned for a very long time because of the comics code. Now, Marvel Cinematic Universe hasn't exactly banned horror, but they haven't full-on gone into horror here, and that's what we're getting. It is directed by Michael Giacchino, who you probably know best as a composer for so many different things, from Marvel stuff to Star Trek to Pixar stuff to beyond – Basically, if you love a modern score, it's probably by Michael Giacchino. But now he's trading his hand as directing. And it was written by Heather Quinn and Peter Cameron, who have done other things in the MCU. Justin, take it away. I was just going to say a bit of news I saw in uh, the biz that maybe is a good a sign about how uh, Marvel thinks this uh, project went is um, Michael Giacchino just got signed by the agency CAA. So I bet he's going to be doing the more. The Creative Artists Agency? <laughs> That's correct. Ooh. Which is a top, it's a big agency in um, Hollywood repping um, creatives. And I think that means. Sorry, he's just be real doing quick. I, I just want to get more into this. Was this part of a competitive situation, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you wouldn't believe how the shingle came through for him to uh, get this. <laughs> That's great stuff. And I'll, I'll tell you what, to get actually get into the special itself, or at least broadly talk about it, this is great. This is um, easily one of my favorite things that Marvel has done in a really long time. It's what I wanted out of the a MCU really in a really long time. long time. I was very happy with this. I was very happy with the fact that beyond just being a fun 53-minute special that is a perfect Halloween night watch if you want to flip it on, you don't need to know anything about Marvel or MCU. And I yeah. know Pete's going to take exception to be framing this up in a negative way, but a lot of these projects for a very long time, and this includes even the stuff that I really like, often feels like you're putting together a puzzle, like how does this piece fit with this other piece? And of course, we'll get there. A lot of the characters are being set up for, I assume, other iterations and other projects on Disney Plus in movies, etc. But this is something that you could just jump in. You don't have to worry about how it fits together and just have a blast watching it. Um, I agree. I, I thought this was great. And I think um, it had a lot of the flourishes and like sort of specificity and sort of weirdness that I've been missing in uh, other Marvel things. The fact that it was like in black and white, except for some interesting touches here and there. Um, it was funny while still maintaining the horror bona fides. Like the tone was really specific. And it's a, a hard tone to strike where sometimes comedy and horror while sort of operate the same way with like setting up tension and then releasing tension, it yeah, yeah. are hard to balance and um i think this um this i don't know what we call it movie special does a great job it's of a special presentation that. it's a, right it's a special presentation Marvel spooky flip now, now, honestly though, i know the Pete has some flip, opinions yeah. but yeah it's important to me to go back <laughs> you you jumped at it no i just it we're on it the well, Marvel flip is a mess Pete, it's a mess what's happening here it's no, almost as if Oh, right, the right, Marvel right, flip right. itself wait, wait, was bit wait, wait, by a Robbie, werewolf. Is, we the, is, the the, werewolf the, is the werewolf by night Jack Russell, or is it the Marvel flip that is somehow mutating into something we don't even understand? Okay, before we get into the fun creative choices they took with the Marvel flip, let me first back up the truck and address the Talk nonsense. about how you woke up today. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> back up the truck. No, the for, truck hasn't moved, Pete. Well, the truck is still in the driveway. Zelvin, why can't we just enjoy something that's great? And I agree, really nice, very creative, in its own little pocket without putting down other projects. Can't we just enjoy what this is 
and try to immediately categorize it and compare it to the last couple of things. Let's just, this is a sweet little uh, fun Halloween pocket of creativity and really some yeah. dramatic fun choices being made with the noir uh, stuff going on. It is great and so much fun. And if you got an hour, sit down, have yourself a blast. I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it from start to finish. Yeah. Uh, Alex, how dare you say that when, as Pete said, this is a fun pocket. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I disagree. It was more of a uh, fun cuff at the bottom of the pads is what I would it say. Was but, oh, it, it was a delightful pouch. It was a delightful pouch. Yeah. It's the poly pocket of uh, yes. Marvel Yes. I'm sorry. You're absolutely right, Pete. From now on, I will try to approach literally everything that I watch as if I was a baby who has lost track of what I'm watching. As soon as I look away, it doesn't exist. I come back. Something new, something surprising. Yeah. Peekaboo, here it is. I'm excited for new baby Zelbin. I feel like this is a good step forward. Who uh, said that? Oh, it's Pete. <laughs> I love Pete. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Fun times. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we got this fun special presentation, and then they kind of, which I've been asking them to do for a while now, is be creative with the Marvel flip. Make some fun choices along the asking way. That. And really, gotta, you, yeah, pay, you really are asking for pays, it here because yeah, yeah, I, I got to say, my one, my one little qualm with this, I was like, oh. too many openings. Calm down. <laughs> Love right. the special and presentation thing. I was like, this is very fun. What a fun throwback. So cool. And I was like, wow, what a great Scary replacement this was for the fun. Marvel flip. And then they went into the Marvel flip. And I was like, okay, so we're doing credits again. And then after the whole Marvel flip thing, they did a third round of credits. That's too many credits. Make a choice, buddy. Yeah. I think they're having fun with it. And it pays off. And... I got scared during the credits. You know what I mean? Like they did a good job of setting this tone. Here, here's and being here's like, what I think. Here's what I think. It's like, could you imagine a situation where there are three people all trying to make jokes about the exact same thing? And no matter what the previous person said, they were just plugging through with their joke anyway. Yeah. That's fair. Like that. That, that's, a, that's why I like it when we make our jokes on top of each other. That way it's not taking up too much time. Yeah, exactly. And then nobody can hear Eventually we're going to sync up and we're going to say the exact same thing at the exact same time. And it's going to be, we have to end everything. Now, wait, to contradict, vibe? To contradict oh, baby right. Alex over here, I did want to say per what you were saying earlier, Justin, and then we can get into the stuff proper, maybe past the title sequence. I don't know. No. But this to felt to me like the same sort of promise I got all the way back with Guardians of the Galaxy. And we've talked about this a lot on the podcast. But seeing Guardians felt like, oh, this is limitless. What we can do here in the Marvel Universe, it can go anywhere. Yes. It can do anything. How exciting. Like, obviously, I love that movie. It's fantastic. But the promise of being able to go in different tones and directions and literal visual styles as well was so exciting to me. And it isn't that we lost that, but that was integrated as a whole into the rest of the MCU with some variations here and there. That's what this feels like again. It feels like something that gives that promise, and maybe I'll be disappointed again to see it reintegrated, and we'll have to wait another decade to see something fresh and new. But I don't think so. I want this to be successful because I want more of this type of thing on Disney+. Plus. You can't help yourself, Who can said you? that? Pete! It's Pete again! Yay! <laughs> can't help yourself. But, you you and, and let me right back into it. You can't just say something nice. You got to shit on well, 10 years or something. The future 10 years, oh, he's saying. Uh, just a quick question. Are we talking about this special or something else, Pete? Uh, that's what I'm wondering. That's why I'm wondering what's going on with you. you know I, mean? I think <laughs> to, to your point, Alex, wow. To your point, I feel like um, it's Marvel is the most successful, when, I think, when it takes its ideas from the, the comic universe and steps out of it for a second and, like, examines them. That's why I think Guardians was so cool because it took all the comic stuff that we all loved and sort of looked at it from a new uh, place and then, and then made it. And this feels like it's doing the same thing. Uh, where it's taking horror, mixing comedy in a good way, mixing film styles. It's shot incredibly well. There's a lot, of, especially in the second half, I thought like so many of these, the the sequence where it's a slow push in on Elsa and you see him transforming in shadow behind her oh, yeah, and on her face. Transfer. I thought that was so like, it, it it's a swing. It's a little bit of a, you have to have the confidence to be like, no, we're going to linger in this shot and not see him transform, which you would in a, a sort of a, a less creative movie. 
And so do we just see it in shadow and then quick cuts to like his fingers and stuff. Like I thought that was great. Now, just to mention this, and again, I'm assuming most people have seen the special, but in case you haven't, one of the pleasant surprises here, I think, is that this isn't just a werewolf by night special episode, though Gail Garcia Bernal does a great job as this new iteration of Jack Russell. It's also very much an Elsa Bloodstone show and yeah. features Laura Donnelly as Elsa Bloodstone. She's been in a bunch of stuff, but you might know her from The Nevers, which is a not particularly good show on HBO, but she is awesome in it and easily one of the best parts. So she nails Elsa Bloodstone here. And I just yeah. thought overall having these two excellent actors in these characters Great. Loved watching them play off of each other. Well, and the other thing um, that I thought really worked here is, uh, first off, I think they treated us, the audience, a, a little smarter than some other um, movies and, and TV shows where we didn't have to hear a whole thing four times. Like, well, if the man thing senses fear, um, you will burn at his touch uh, before we finally just got him doing it. And it just happened. And we didn't need to have a whole big explanation, just did it. And I was like, I didn't wonder. I feel like someone watching is like, no, that if you that, that guy touches you, you turn into flames. Well, um, I, I, I did want to mention this as well. I mean, jumping off of that, but I think this special really played by Star Wars rules. Like a lot of people talk about this and then they don't really follow up on it. The original Star Wars just kind of thrust you into this world. I did it explain yeah. a lot of the backstory. Uh, occasionally there were little monologues about it, but mostly it was like, yeah, this guy is, you know, chopping off his arm at a bar. There's a bunch of weirdos in this bar. Han Solo has a backstory. You don't need to hear it. Let's just roll with it. This is the force. This is how it works. Let's go. And a, there were a lot of flourishes like that, like you were mentioning the man thing, thing, uh, but also Jack Russell's uh, paint Ted. on his Ted. face. Ted. What? Yeah. Uh, Ted. Ted, of course. Yes, sorry to call him man thing. I apologize. The Jack Russell's uh, designs on his face where he's like, that's for my ancestors. Him referencing the Dracula head and being like, yeah, we fought once. Yeah, it's fought all a couple of thi- times. Yes. All of this stuff throughout the special, like, clearly these characters have backstories, histories, relationships. We only get to know what we need to know to enjoy this 53 minutes. And like you're saying, Justin, it's such a smart, confident choice that I absolutely loved. And I think the other thing that really worked is it's simple. Like the story was simple. It's like, hey, we have this object of power, the Bloodstone, and all these um, killers are going to come here and fight over it. And once we're there, it's like, oh, great. I know that half of these people are red shirts. We're going to see them die in like cool ways. And um, we're going to see that we get a couple twists and turns along the way. But keeping this sort of general premise simple, like compare this to, and I'm not saying it's bad because I, I did like the movie, but like the Doctor Strange multiverse um, of madness movie, where like it's the opposite of simple everything is wildly complicated from the jump and you're sort of like sifting through it so much in your brain that it's hard to really get swept up in the narrative and um, this did such a great job of just being like hey come hang out it's a special presentation let's ride yeah i really appreciate the fact that uh, not only was it kind of like uh you know simple as you're calling it but also the fact that it was shot black and white in a way that you didn't miss the color like it was such a noir choice that you weren't kind of like questioning it along the way like hey when's this going to turn into color like you were having fun in this world that it just kind of started with as Zelvin said the star wars thing where i i just really appreciated the fact of like we're here. This is what it's going to be like. This is the tone. Get used to this. And we're off and running. I mean, the whole kind of like fun twist. I mean, we got a lot of cool Easter eggs, right? You know, we got Man Thing, you know, Ted. We got these kind of like, there was a lot of nerd references. I mean, uh, so it was, did kind of occupy my comics brain in a fun way. Uh, but it also was its own separate thing. I, I really appreciated all the artistic choices they were making with the camera, as well as just the, the whole look of everything. It was kind of this old, fun, kind of uh, timey monster movie, uh, you know, feel to it. And it really just kind of delivered on that level the whole time. And then the just kind of fun of them at the end, just, you know, uh, sitting around campfire talking about sushi, just what a fun way to end it. And then, the, you know, Elsa got her color back. It was just like frozen all over again. You know what I mean? You had that good <laughs> feeling at the end of it. You know, Bloodstone reference for little Jumanji love. It was just fun. It was just yeah, a the fun. Stone, the stone never bothered her anyway. There's a bunch of there things I go. want to respond to there. And I do want to come back to the whole black and white color of it all. Actually, let me mention that first. Just like 
a point of not clarification, but I guess information. So uh, as far as I understand it, they actually shot it both ways. They shot it in color and then had a monitor to watch it in black and white as they were mm -hmm. doing it, because the idea was they really wanted to do it in black and white, but they weren't confident that Marvel would want to do that, that Disney Plus would want to do that. So when they delivered, I believe, the initial cut of the episode, they sent it to Kevin Feige in black and white. You're like, this is how we want to do it. I don't know if you're going to go for this. And Kevin Feige was like, looks great. Let's do it. So kudos to him. I can speak to that for doing it. Yeah, go ahead. I can speak to that from a production standpoint, because um, the way I shot a commercial and the similar thing where the people uh, were not like, like we, we were like, we want to do it in black and white. And they were like, we don't know if that's going to work. We're like, OK, well, we'll show you. And so because of the way, you, you know, digital film production, you can you're, you're gathering the data for color. The only real difference is you really want to light it a little bit differently for black and white. So I bet they were able to just tweak that. And then they had both cuts, the color and black and white. And it's just simply like flipping a switch in post to go back and forth between either of those things. Well, yeah, that's but, the big thing, like you said, is uh, for anybody wondering out there, is that you can't just film it in color and then put a black and white filter over it. There are things that you actually have to do on the stage to make it work. And I think, like Pete's been saying, they made it work. And also yeah. what's nice about the black and white is you get that cool Ted reveal where it's almost like part of the wall. And if that was in color, that would be so much harder to pull off. And it, it kind of really adds to this kind of like uh, monster fun of, of, you know, the kind of reveal shock value, but, Oh, it's just Ted and they're cool. Uh, just the tone of them immediately talking, even though we were on pins and needles mere seconds before was such I a fun twist. I wish I had was able to switch black and forth between black and white and color because I would be wearing like a the mask style yellow zoot suit all the time. And in black and white, you'd be like, this guy's dressed normally. And then I'd scare the shit out of you when we hear somewhere <laughs> over the rainbow. And uh, I'd be like, that guy's wearing a <laughs> somewhere over the rainbow. I mean, come on. I, you know, that's such an iconic song. And you think like, OK, I've heard that and seen that and uh, and all the ways. But man, really just a fun way to kind of make that even better. I was it was really a impressed. delightful needle drop. We, we've we already been talking about this a bit, but I do want to talk about Mad Thing because he is the Ted. third part of this. I thought the effect for Man Thing, like the way they did him almost, maybe I was imagining this, but it almost felt like they gave him a little bit of a claymation movement in a certain way yeah. uh, versus CGI. I think it and I think it had a little weight to it, mm -hmm. like the his his face felt not just CGI where it's all f just floating. It felt like, oh, it's sort of heavy and almost gross is what I was thinking when I was watching it. Yeah. And it didn't feel that way necessarily in the last scene. Like, I think that was a little more because there was more movement to it. It felt a little more like the CGI characters that we regularly see in Marvel. But I thought that was awesome. I thought I, I love the effect. The facial expressions were so much fun and funny to watch and the reveal towards the end of the episode, which I definitely should have seen coming, but when he comes back and saves Elsa uh, towards the end, great. Just a great awesome. reveal. I laughed out loud because it was so oh, much, yeah. so much fun. Yeah. And then that was funny. Like he went that away. Just so funny. Just such a fun use. Uh, two other things I want to say before we maybe talk about it uh, a little bit more detailed. Um, I was so into this story that I forgot. I didn't even realize that the bloodstone was red. Like I was like, look at mm -hmm. that. And then I was like, oh, oh, right. It is in color when everything else is in black and white. I was like, I was just like in it. And I feel like that's never happens I, to be that into something that I don't notice that. And second, the first Separate half of somebody works in production. Yeah, I'm an idiot, I guess. Um, I the, uh, the first half, <laughs> the uh, watching the first half, and I was like, oh, the Bloodstone, who's this going to be? And then I, he was like, he he transforms, Jack Russell transforms. I was like, right, werewolf. <laughs> well, I forgot he's going to do that because <laughs> that's how just into the the actual just regular story it was. And I was like, what is the mystery with this guy? He seems to be not good at killing people. I was like, oh, right, because he does it when he's a werewolf. That's what it is. And just uh, not to say I am stupid, but I do think this story was so effectively told that I wasn't sitting there being like, when are we going to get the hairy guy in here? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Well, well because speaking, also you... Oh, go ahead, Pete. No, no. I, I just feel like, speaking of like moments that I was like a little bit like, oh, right. Uh, uh, the, one, of the, one of the only negative things for me was when the werewolf was fighting there was almost like a kind of like werewolf foo where it was like a little bit 
too choreographed mm. for me where I felt like, I don't know if the werewolf is this well trained in fighting. Like I appreciate the fact that if you're going to fight all the time, maybe you kind of uh, learn different ways to do it. But I, 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 I felt like that was the only part for me where I was pulled out of the moment a little bit where the werewolf was kind of doing a lot of choreographed kind of fighting instead of just kind of flailing and kind of being a werewolf you know but maybe... i could definitely i could see that i did not personally have a problem with it because during that sequence there's two things going on right one they have the reveal which i think was really well filmed uh, of yeah. the werewolf effect which is this kind of cheesy looking very like 1930s universal horror movie werewolf very purposefully so but the way that michael giacchino and his staff film it it's little pieces and it's mostly far away. And like you were saying earlier, Justin, it's all in shadow. So when he is jumping around and doing these things, I think it's purposefully, it didn't have that like CGI blur thing going on to me. So right. much, even though I'm sure there was a lot of that going on there, so much as it felt like we're doing this in a very frenetic way. So you don't see like him standing there in the chintzy costume exactly how they would do in the 1930s. The other part of it, is that whole sequence really crisped in for me that, oh, yeah, we're doing uh, just a reminder that we're doing superhero horror here. Like, this is not mm. a horror oh, movie. Okay. This is comic book horror. This is Marvel Universe horror. So we are getting lots of blood and gore, blood uh, splashed on the camera, which is one of my favorite effects. It's just so simple, but so it, wor it works That's every time. time. It works That's every so time. Great. That's um, your well, favorite effect. I, I love it. It's so fun just because it's just like splashes on the camera. And obviously they're not splashing the camera with anything, but it's just very fun. But uh, you, you get this action sequence, like you're saying, which it is a werewolf doing werewolf foo and jumping around and beating up these dudes who, to clarify, in the trailer, people thought they were part of the TVA, the Time Variance Authority. They're mm. not part of the yeah. Time Variance Authority. No. They just have very that similar would be... costumes. Yeah, that'd be a wild reveal. Um, yeah, to your point, I feel like this whole thing, to take it to comic books, it felt like it was drawn by, like, Kelly Jones or mm -hmm. uh, or Jay Lee or uh, some, an artist that really is putting that tone on it. Um, and I think to be able to create that in, from a film standpoint is really hard and really cool that they pulled it off. Yeah, I on the we've spent a little time talking about the werewolf, so let's go back and talk about Elsa. I thought this was a great introduction for her here. She's a fantastic, very underused character in yeah. the Marvel yeah. Universe, I think. But like I said earlier, Laura Donnelly channeled her perfectly. I love centering her here. I think centering her in this bloodline uh, and this whole society, that's something that I'd be interested to explore more, particularly now that she's the chief of it. And like we were talking about in terms of simple introductions, granted, there is a little bit of exposition there, but having her come in and then being like, you got to get out of here, you're not wanted here. Simple things like her dragging the chair across the floor and annoying everybody. Great. Classic I, men in black chair pull bit. Oh, yeah. But I also think it was like such a like we've seen so many times the this is the family tradition and you have to fit into this mold and the younger person being like, I don't like these awful ways. I'm different. I th So I think they handled that really well of like her being over all of this, you know, and the mom being really into it. And I just felt like. Like you're saying, selves, we didn't get this whole thing. Like they just showed us instead of tell, told us, and they did a really good job of that. Because we don't have to kind of relive something we've seen in numerous, numerous ways in different kind of iterations. So I thought that it was handled really well, and just her kind of like expression said so much about like what she's about. And uh, it's also exciting move forward because now that she does have this, how is she going to change things? What kind of things can she do? So. Uh, I, I was really impressed with that. Um, Are we getting to a Blade Trinity type situation with if these characters are to appear in a Blade movie um, with uh, alongside um, Blade, Elsa and, and Jack Russell? Well, I think that's definitely getting to our vision board section. But originally they had considered maybe putting Blade in this at some point and decided not to, which I think is for the best, again, to let it yeah. stand yeah. on its own. But yeah, this opens up. You could do more stuff with Jack Russell. Uh, I was thinking, particularly when he was turning into the werewolf, that I would be into do one 
werewolf by night special a year or something like that. Oh, like yeah. it doesn't need to be a yeah. series. doesn't need to be a movie. Just have just different adventures that he goes on and explore different aspects of supernatural horror. I think that would be very fun. Uh, I did want to take a little bit of a step back and talk about something that Pete mentioned in terms of Easter eggs and just agree with you on that point that I think one of the things that's great about this is you can watch it both ways. You can watch it if you have no knowledge of Marvel or the comics and just have a fun time with a superhero horror show, special presentation, or there are so many, you could be Googling the heads. You could be Googling who these different hunters yeah. are. You can Google. Hey, 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 quit Googling the heads over there, all right? Let's just pay attention to what's <laughs> going Google on. Your head. Hey. Oh, uh, or, you know, the names of Elsa's uh, ancestors in that tomb when they're locked in there. You can look yeah. up all of those and see which are crew members, which are people who are in the Marvel comics. But ultimately, that's just all side stuff. You know, if you want to do that, that's there. That's great. But that's not the point of the episode. It's just a fun no. bonus, which is exactly what Easter eggs should be. One thing I'm surprised we haven't uh, talked about yet, and I feel like this was a huge game changer, but maybe it's just me. Um, th- I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I die, I want to die like this with somebody <laughs> turning the crank and then I come back to life for a little animatronic fun for everybody. I mean, come on. how How crazy fun was that? I mean, that's... That's going to change the funeral game forever moving forward, right? I can't wait to be turning the crank at your funeral and have you go like, whoa, 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 let's back up the truck. This was bananas good. That's my dream. I'll be, And let's just say I'll be your weird butler. Oh, <laughs> man, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Great. I'll be the crazy lady who gets eaten by a werewolf. That's my job. Oh, that's also very nice. Yes. Thank you. I did like that pun at the end. That... That I think, like, I was already into the special by that point, and I was already enjoying it, but that flourish, having him do a Crypt Keeper-style pun at the end of his speech was uh, what sucked me fully in, because I was like, yep, they know the tone they're going for, they're having a good time here, this is great. Yeah, I mean, that I whole build-up to, like, hey, listen, I've said enough. Let's let the uh, guy of the hour, you know, I was like, what are we about to see uh, and it was it rode the line between like creepy fun and like I mean that could have gone really badly of like looking horrible and being stupid and kind of making me have horrible flashbacks right. of Chuck E. Cheese nightmares. But like mm. this was uh, mm. super super Did well you, done. You went to the one in, near the Barclay Center where they use the real mouse corpse, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, that is I really don't recommend hard. it. Yeah, no, yeah. it's very unsanitary. Yeah. Before we move to the vision board section that we've already touched on a little bit, any other notes from the episode that you want to call out? Um, a couple of quick things. Great sword kill um, later on in the episode that um, Elsa has. Uh, I love that just one swipe and then one in the middle and the sword doesn't really go in very far. Yeah. <laughs> just sort of sits. I, I like, like when it's it a little dirty. Yeah. Uh, uh, God. I uh, just an amazing use of a flaming tuba. I mean, come on, that was just how I want to make all my entrances from now on. Just have somebody with a flaming tuba. I mean, that was just mm-hmm. really you're getting impressive. a lot of party and funeral ideas from this special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you planning your own funeral, Pete? Mm, I hope. Well, I don't know. You got You got to plan <laughs> a little bit. You know what I mean? You got yeah, instructions exactly. for when you die. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, just when you start ordering the perishable to, food. And we talked about him a little bit already, but Gail Garcia Bernal's delivery on stuff. He just was yeah. so pleasant and funny. The thing where he sees Ted for the first time is delightful. Like Pete mentioned, the sushi seed at the end is also delightful. But even little things like when he bumps into Elsa in the maze, and it's like, yeah. hey, why don't we just pretend this didn't happen? And yeah, let's just keep going in different directions. What do you think? Yeah. The way that he delivered that really made that joke land in a very surprising way. Now, this might be just... Oh, go ahead. uh, Real quick one. Uh, Just almost the Buster Keaton-esque way of like him trying to get the bomb to stick to the wall. Yeah. Uh, Was was like super fun, just little piece. It sticks to the wall, and he's like... (laughs) Yeah. "Ah." Yeah, that was just so funny, the way he's like so scared of it, but trying to get it to stick was such a fun moment. But... uh, and this is probably just me, but I feel like this was a little bit of an homage to Samurai Jack when you have the really over-the-top Scottish uh, warrior 
who uh, you know we got to see for a little bit. I I felt like that was really uh, a fun character who's very proud of his kills and kind of like I I, I thought like um, yeah uh, just might be a stereotype, but uh, I very much enjoyed uh, the character. Well, what I liked about that specifically was that we set this creepy, very careful tone for so long. Three intros, the flip, all that. And then we get to like the Scottish accent, just cutting through all that to be like, oh, this is going to be a little funny too. So don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. And it reminded me of um, the this whole thing had the tone of the second half of From Dust Till Dawn. Mm. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. uh, once you're past all the sort of quentin tarantino stuff and you're into their uh when they're in the um the brothel um the bordello i guess is the right word and it you see all the random red shirts who show up who are vampire hunters and uh and it's yeah, i love that movie and i love that tone oh one last little visual thing that i wanted to mention every 20 minutes they have a cigarette burn which is a little yeah. circle in the corner of the yeah. screen that pops up to let you know when you're supposed to change reels because you've run out of film. Obviously, they don't need to do that for this. But little visual throw flourishes like that, or like we mentioned, changing to color on Somewhere Over the Rainbow, focusing on Elsa and letting it just slowly wash over. Great. Just uh, so much creativity yeah. on display here. This is clearly a great showpiece for Michael Giacchino as a director. You can kind of feel sometimes when somebody finally gets their shot that they're just putting their all into it and yeah. it paid off. So yeah, why don't we move great. to the vision board? Again, we touched on the future a little bit, but what do you want to see off of this? What would you like to see next, if anything, in the MCU? Well, I Pete? want to see them getting sushi for sure. You know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I just want very much of, the next scene. Yeah. Ted and Jack just kind of hanging out uh you know living their lives you know, i don't need like a lot of things to happen just the two of them together is just adorable and it's so much fun i hope that sushi's not scared because uh, if it is when he picks it up it's gonna burn and i'm sure he wants it on <laughs> what dead. about you justin what's on your vision board well i don't know if i want to see it but the idea of um of the Blade movie featuring um, some of these characters, Elsa, Jack Russell. Maybe it's not for the first one, because I do think, and maybe this is my love for the first Blade movie, the fact that that was sort of on its own and a little untouched uh, by a larger larger stuff going on was great. Um, so to inject all this other uh, Marvel stuff from this might be a little crazy, but I do think these characters all slide into a whole new section of the Marvel Cinematic Universe that I'm excited, if they can continue to really crush this tone, I'm excited to explore that. Yeah, I, I mentioned this a little bit before, but in terms of Jack and Ted, so great. Happy to see them wherever, but I think hold them off for a yearly Halloween special or something like that. I think that would be a really fun way to use them. On the other hand, I think Elsa Bloodstone is somebody who is really well set up for her own Disney Plus series or to show up in the Blade movie or Moon Knight season two or something like that. She mm. definitely feels like somebody who can jump around to a bunch of different places. But the biggest thing that I'm really looking forward to is uh, Pete's funeral. I would love to see that. It sounds like it's going to be a blast. It's going to be so much yeah. fun, guys. You're going to forget that I'm dead. <laughs> that's and that's the point of every funeral is to th assume the person might still be alive at right. the end. Justin and I will wander off and be like, "Okay, Pete, ready to tape that podcast?" Oh, no. <laughs> if you'd like to support our podcast, patreoncom slash club. Also, we do a live show every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. to Crowdcast on YouTube. Come hang out. We would love to chat with you about Marvel stuff. Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, or the app of your choice to subscribe, listen, and follow the show at Marvel Vision Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, comicbookclublive.com for this podcast and many more. Until next time, stay awoo marvelous. Oh my God. <laughs> Do you think that's scary? Kawuki, Chris. <laughs> that's what it is. There we go.